the fun begins. Nice and clear. Welcome to Hogan Racing, guys. This is episode two of the build series. The ultimate Nissan Skyline drift car. I've never seen any YouTubers show like where the hell you get metal? So I thought it'd be kind of fun to bring you guys along for the ride. We're picking up metal because we're basically starting all the major fab work now. If I was like a little kid, I, I would love it here. I'd be climbing all over everything. <laughs> so yeah, it is insane in here. There's literally metal freaking everywhere. We normally, with the race cars, we usually stick with like DOM tubing. They've got all different sizes you can want, different wall thicknesses, everything like that. They cut to size and you bring it home and the fun begins. All right, we'll see you guys back at the shop. Peace. up got everything kind of much closer to where it's gonna be there's this weird thing with the r32 chassis where it has this like crazy lip under here um, and we were actually contacted that and we were higher than the recommended wise fab height so it's not like we were running crazy low or anything like that we are allowed to fold it over generally you can't really modify like this upper area um, you're allowed to cut forward of like the forward most suspension point and then you can always smash in like the lip down here inside, but not necessarily up top. So we had to get approval from that from Formula Drift. It wasn't quite what we wanted, but we'll be able to make it work. Right now, Jen was working on boxing these so we can start tubing the front end. 24 hours later. You guys, this thing is really starting to come together. Look at this. I'm like stoked on this. <laughs> I'm stoked. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just I'm so stoked. Woo. So we cut it. And then I boxed all of this stuff in to completely tub and seal the cabin from any smoke, rubber, any of that garbage that might build up in any of these spots. It's like flush with like the inside and we're not allowed to like modify that. We have the most clearance you can possibly get. So we're set up for, <clears throat> I know we've talked in the past, hopefully like a 285, maybe 295 tire. This gives us like the most clearance possible and then we just have the rear overs which is kind of like drape over but It'll allow for like maximum travel, everything. Most people, as you'll probably see on other stuff, will cut all the way back here and get rid of this whole section. But then you just get all this buildup of crap. That like, one of the guys that was on my team, like way in the OG days, when I was gone for a weekend, he cut the sides off of the Genesis just like that. And then next thing I knew, there's just smoke everywhere inside. It was terrible. I personally, and JMO thinks this is the most proper way to do it. You're sealed in, sealing in the cabin. Everything back here don't matter so much. Let the smoke go. Let it go, let it go. So we're still freaking waiting on the subframe. We're losing our minds about it. Cause that really impacts like everything back here. Cause we're probably gonna have to notch this for the diff and kind of the cage that goes over the subframe. And we can't really like box this rear end or any of that stuff till we get that. So that will probably be next episode, but there's so much that's gone down on the front end. So let's check that out. All right, just kidding. I wanna show you guys the inside real quick. This has been a lot of work, but there wasn't like major stuff we had to do in here. Um, until we get the transmission, we're unsure if we have to like cut the tunnel or not. Jamie went ahead and basically got rid of like unnecessary sh Hey, that's not unnecessary. <laughs> I just, I've already knocked like four things over here <laughs> during this filming. <laughs> I'm a mess. So cut off like the stock handbrake mount and then just basically like plugged all the holes, even the little ones. You got a couple more to do. There's tiny little holes everywhere. Why? Nobody knows. We don't know. But basically the goal inside here, keep out smoke, keep out fire, anything like that. Along with the Lexan windows, this will be pretty enclosed in here. That's basically inside. Can't do too much till we get the transmission. But let's check out the front end. We've been going back and forth on like all sorts of ways to do it. And we have determined that this is the easiest way to do it and the least time consuming. There are obviously other ways to do this, but the main goal of this car, so you guys know, is we're trying to get it done properly and done in a fast time frame. but I'm super pumped on it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty pretty self-explanatory here. We ran our ran a down tube down to the side of the rail instead of the top. I kind of like this side, the side landing here. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, we still we left the lower support in the center as well. Kind of gives us the option to mount stuff using that instead of tubing across. And then we kind of angle it up a little bit, so I'll make the intercooler piping a little bit easier to get up to stuff. The neat thing is now, if you guys notice. 
this is our oil cooler and it has a massive fan. This is a fan that like some people would use on their radiators. And so it's like, this is now gonna be pulling, or pushing rather, through both of these and helping with cooling. I think it's gonna pan out really freaking well. At this point, Jim was just gonna make the mounts for the oil cooler. Dash bar is really the last thing and then kind of cleaning stuff up, but really simple, really three, three tubes. Yeah. Three tubes and a couple of brackets. Man, I wish we had, we need like a really cool delivery truck, but we got freaking parts. Those, super sick, not as critical. This though, we gotta bust this open and show you guys. Bust it open. What the hell is that? Oh, there you go, dude. God, I thought I'm we got like, like, oh my god, no! I thought we got so many bonus things. What the hell is that? Don't want to go back to that. Get out of here. That's important. The people need to see. Oh! oh. Whoa! Oh my God, this Whoa, is so dude! Hard in person. All right, so we'll, we'll bring this thing inside and get you guys some beauty shots, but this is our Racetech Services 6XD. It's a six-speed sequential transmission. It's ready for 2,000 foot-pounds of torque. I, this will probably be the last thing to ever fail, or fail on the car. It's a little overkill. Completely overkill. Things are looking pretty good. I feel like this is gonna fit fairly well. So just for just so you guys know, like Jamo and I, at least to my knowledge, I've never dealt with any sequential stuff. Have you, Jamo? No, not really. It's a whole new world for us. This crazy handle. I love it. I'm super pumped. If any of you guys are race car boys and looking for a good solution, definitely race tech services. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What are you doing? I'm just gonna cut this thing out. So if you guys are wondering why Jim was doing that, so it has like this whole shifter mechanism that's really not supposed to be removed. So we're kind of forced to do some type of, just a small panel that we can remove. We don't wanna to have to do like a whole transmission tunnel, but now we should be able to pop it in. Freaking in, boys and girl, singular. It's gotta be at least one girl out there watching. <laughs> Probably not though. Probably not, but not on her own will. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, it's just sick. So like so much freaking clearance. So that saves us a ton of work. The transmission, like, those are nice and clear. Just trim a little bit, and then we'll just basically have a little access panel with probably like four little Zeus clips. Way less work than creating a whole new transmission tunnel. Jim and I are both stoked on that. I'm stoked. Weird thing is we're still waiting on the subframe that's supposed to be here probably tomorrow or the next day at the time of when this video is released. Guys, I think we're gonna cut this episode here. I don't want this to just get so crazy in so many episodes like the Tacoma. We'll probably do one more fabrication episode and then it'll be like wiring and plumbing and all little fancy bits, body kit. So give us some feedback if you like this route better than like the Tacoma build or kind of what you guys want to see. If you guys want to support the channel, hogginracing.com has all our merch. Jim has got one of the fancy boy t-shirts on. Mm. That's actually, I don't even know if we have any of those left. We might have like one left. But yeah, a bunch more awesome news. We got a wheel partner for this thing, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave us a like, and we'll see you guys soon. Peace. Okay, so I was just like recording some B-roll for the video, and then Jamo said that our editor Aaron has been up to some just ignorance. See if he's gonna edit this out of the... <laughs> you have to leave it, Aaron. Look at this. What the fuck is that, Aaron? Aaron, tell me what you want done and bring me your parts. Explain yourself. <laughs> Apparently he wanted to extend his upper control arm for who knows what reason. Jamo and I were not aware of this.